You're listening to The Philip Jordan Show. What's up, everybody? Welcome in to another edition. We are coming to you on Wednesday morning here on The Philip Jordan Show right here on Wiregrass. Daily of Sports. Of course, I am your host, Philip Jordan, the studio host and producer of Bethlehem's Football on 96.9, The Legend. Got a fun show planned for you guys today. I am going to be joined by David Schultz. He is the host of Locked on Sunbelt, and you check him out 3 to 6 on the sports chat on 103.3, The Goat, there in Lafayette, Louisiana. We're going to preview the Sunbelt Championship game, kind of go over the Sunbelt as a whole this year, kind of get Dave's surprises, his overall thoughts on the conference in football, and also get uh, Dave's thoughts on the SEC championship game. It's a good 20-minute conversation coming up. Also, before we do that, we are going to talk about the latest college football playoff rankings. Arkansas has got a new offensive coordinator, some transfer portal news, and the ACC-SEC basketball challenge started on Tuesday night. We're going to go over all the results and give you the schedule for Wednesday night. Uh, real quick before we do all that, let's you know find me in a podcast, find me on social media at P Jordan SCC. The podcast is available at wiregrassdailynews.com or wherever you get your podcast. Look up Wiregrass Daily News Sports for the feed. Uh, you can check it out on Apple Podcasts. Please follow, rate, and review. Leave a review. I will read it on a future edition of the show. And if you leave just four stars, you're just a straight up hater. You can also email me at sportsoffphilipjordan at gmail.com. So let's spend about five to eight minutes on a few items here real quickly before I bring David on to the show. So the, the latest college football rankings came out. We only have one more to come out. That is this Sunday when the final ones come out. After championship Saturday, we will know who the four playoff teams are going to be. So no surprise, at number one, we do have Georgia. No shock here. Uh, number two is Michigan. Well, maybe, you know, maybe some people would flip that around, but I like it. Georgia and Michigan, one and two. Michigan goes up. They were at three last week, but beating Ohio State put them there. Washington now jumps up to three. They were at four last week, and Florida State comes in at number four in the rankings. Now, they had dropped back down to five last week, and Washington had jumped over them. I still believe that that was a complete punishment for Jordan Travis being injured. But Florida State's back in there in the four. Then you got Oregon at five, Ohio State six, and Ohio State season's done. Texas at seven, and Alabama is at eight. And of course, during the broadcast, Kurt Herbstreit, Greg McElroy, they had some heated discussions on who should be in or, or how this thing should be looked at for best or more deserving and stuff like that. You look at it, let's just let's just look at the scenario. Georgia beats Alabama, we know they're in. Michigan, they're going to beat Iowa. Iowa can't score points. We know what's going to go down there. Then Washington, they take care of business. They beat Oregon. We know they're in. Then Florida State beats Louisville. They're in. It's easy. That's a four. That's chalk. But what if Georgia gets beat by Alabama in a close game? Do we get two in? I think how can you not say Georgia's one of the best four teams, even if they do lose to Alabama? in the SEC championship game, and then you've got to put Alabama in because they are the SEC champions, and they just beat the number one team in the country. Then you got Michigan sitting there. I think we all can pretty much say out of all these four teams in the top four, they're the biggest lock to be in the playoff just because of who they're playing in their conference championship game. Then you have Washington, Oregon. Winner of that one probably is in. It's pretty much could be a play-in game, almost like a playoff game, these two teams going against each other. Or does that leave Texas? You know, they beat Alabama. And they did say on the committee, I saw it, that they said head-to-head -head matters. And, and it seems like that's why Texas is still ahead of Alabama. You ask me my opinion, if these two teams played right now, even in Austin or in Tuscaloosa, wherever we're going to put these two teams to play, I think Alabama would beat Texas right now. But head-to-head, -head, Texas beat Alabama. That's Alabama's one loss of the year. Texas' one loss is against Oklahoma. Now, Texas does play Oklahoma State, so it's going to be very interesting what happens this week, particularly if Alabama was to upset Georgia in the SEC championship game. And then at the end of the day, I don't think they would vote Florida State out in any situation. They would be an undefeated ACC champion. 
They would have deserved it. Look, I know Louisville beat got beat by Kentucky this past Saturday, but still Louisville is a solid team. I mean, that win's not as good as it would be, but still a solid team there in Louisville. So we'll see. Um, for me, my top four, who I think are the four best teams versus the four most deserving, my four best teams right now, I got to have Georgia, Michigan. I think I think Oregon's better than Washington. I, I, teaser for later week, me and Matt Lowe, I'm going to pick Oregon to win that game. I think Alabama's better than Florida State right now. I think Texas may be better, but are they most deserving? They lost games. Florida State hasn't. Regardless of the quarterback is, Florida State deserves to be where they're at. So, And if they win this Saturday, they still deserve to be there, but there's going to be that discussion. You kind of got to wonder, will part of the country and outside of Tallahassee be just rooting for Louisville because they just feel like, man, if this thing goes chalk and we have Florida State versus Georgia in the first semifinal or in the semifinals, Georgia's probably going to roll in that one because we don't have confidence in Tate Rodemaker. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, Over in Arkansas, they got a new offensive coordinator coming in. Not official, official, but it looks like everything's going to be a done deal here. Bobby Petrino will be returning to Arkansas to be the new offensive coordinator there. Of course, he was the head coach there from 2008 to 2011. Uh, He was fired back in 2012. The motorcycle incident, you all know, you know, you know what happened. The I said improper relationship he was having uh, there at Arkansas and all kinds of stuff there. Now he was 34 and 17 as the head coach there, 17, 15 in the SEC, but 2010, 10 and 3, 2011, 11 and 2. Uh, quarterbacks he coached there at Arkansas, Ryan Mallett, rest in peace, and then Tyler Wilson, two quarterbacks that put up big numbers there. And then also he coached Lamar Jackson there at Louisville. So, interesting Sam Pittman bringing him in. Is this an act of desperation? You kind of felt like it was when Jimbo Fisher brought Bob Petrino in A&M for this past season. Now, this situation is coming, coming up now with uh, with Petrino. Look, he can coach quarterbacks. He's a good offensive mind. We know that. But, you know, there's always going to be that pass off the field situations Bob Petrino has been in. People are going to talk about. Now, transfer portal news potentially. Now, none of this is official. Nobody's agreed or signed from anywhere, but this is just kind of like some crystal ball stuff. 24-7 sports, Matt Zenitz predicts Max Johnson, former A&M and LSU quarterback, will transfer to North Carolina to replace Drake May. Max Johnson has injury issues pretty much everywhere he's been. Um, he's he's a solid quarterback. He's not a great quarterback. I don't think he's a guy that's going to lead you to a national championship unless there's just so many great pieces around him. But he's a solid quarterback when healthy. North Carolina's going to need a quarterback. He could replace Drake May. When he did play this year, he had nine touchdowns, five interceptions for 1,452 yards. Of course, everybody remembers he started his career there at LSU. And then finally, on Tuesday night, began the ACC-SEC Challenge. See which conference is better in basketball. We're going to talk some basketball in here from time to time. Georgia Tech kicked things off. They defeated Mississippi State, number 21 Mississippi State, 67 to 59. South Carolina defeated Notre Dame, 65 to 53. Syracuse defeated LSU, 80 to 57. Number 12 Kentucky blew out. Number eight Miami, 95 to 73. Reed Shepard in that game had 21 points, 13 in the second half coming off the bench. Kentucky in the second half shot 67%. We just defeat defeat any team when they're shooting the ball that well in the second half or any point in the game. For Shepard, he was five and nine from three point land. It was forty two to thirty seven at halftime, but uh, Kentucky outscored Miami fifty three to thirty six there in the second half. Missouri defeated Pitt seventy one to sixty four. Ole Miss defeated North Carolina State seventy two to fifty two, and Alabama was defeated. Number twenty three Alabama was defeated by Clemson. 85 to 77 to fall to five and two on the season. For Clemson, they had four players in double figures. They were led by center PJ Hall, who had 21 points, eight rebounds, and four blocks in the game. Alabama was led by guard Mark Sears, who had 23 points. He really was non existent offensively for most of the first half. Got some points going there at the end of the first half and into the second half, like I said, with 23 points. Alabama actually came out pretty on fire. To agree there in the second half, the start, I don't mean, look like they were cruising, but then Clemson uh, takes the lead. Uh, in the game, Clemson shot 53% overall. They were 52% from three-point land. 
Alabama shot 34% and 31% from three. Of course, with Nate Oates in Alabama, they want to shoot the three. So Alabama drops to five and two. This is their first home loss of the season. Alabama will be back in action on December 4th on Monday when they play Arkansas State at home. That will be 7 o'clock over on the SEC Network. Then on Wednesday, number 10, Tennessee, will be at number 17, North Carolina, 6-15 on ESPN. Number 14, Texas A&M, will be at Virginia, another 6-15 game. This will be at ESPN, too. Florida at 4-2 and two will be at Wake Forest, who is 3-3, three and three, another 6-15 game, and that will be on ESPN. You, the following four games I'm going to mention are all 8-15 tips. Virginia Tech will be at Auburn, ESPN, too. Number seven, Duke will be at Arkansas. That is on ESPN. Boston College will be at Vanderbilt. That is on the SEC Network. And Georgia will be at Florida State. That will be on the ACC Network. So that's kind of a look at a few headlines from Tuesday. Right, we're going to take a quick one-minute break. When I turn, I'll be joined on the phone. It's a phone conversation with David Schultz from Locked on Sunbelt at 103.3 to get The legend is your connection to classic country legends. But Digio Strategies has other options too. News Talk 103.9 is your source for America's top news and entertainment shows like Rick and Bubba in the morning, Glenn Beck from 9 till 11 a.m., and Clay Travis and Buck Sexton middays from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. Sean Hannity, Lars Larson, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, and others fill your day with the latest news and views from America's top conservative voices. America at night and coast to coast am keep you company and connected throughout the night plus fox news the alabama radio network and wiregrass daily news keep you informed with national international state and local news and with more musical choices like all the hits 1067 kmx today's country 95.5 wtvy and music 1077 digio strategies gives you more choices and more variety listen on air online and on our apps 96.9 the legend is just the beginning joining me today on the show is david schultz you can check him out over on sports chat from three to six on one 103.3 103.3 The Goat out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Also, every day on Locked On Sunbelt. And uh, David, I always appreciate you coming on. Look forward to talking to Sunbelt Championship game with you today. Thanks, Philip. Really appreciate your time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great to have you on. And uh, I guess I wanted to start before we actually got into the Sunbelt Championship game. Just what a year for the Sunbelt. 12 teams going bowling course. James Madison gets yeah. to go to a bowl game. Can't play in the championship game, but playing in a bowl game. Just your thoughts, just kind of looking back at this year for Sun, the Sunbelt in football. Well, it has been a roller coaster of a ride for a lot of teams, right? Not so much for Troy or JMU, but, I mean, they were calling for Sean Clark's head. And now they're playing for the Sunbelt Championship uh, from lovely Boone, North Carolina, and App State, right? Uh, same thing with Butch Jones. I mean, Butch Jones and Arkansas State were scored 100, outscored 110 to 3 in the first two weeks. Uh, and now they're going bowling. Uh, ODU, I think their over under was like one and a half wins total. And they went five and three in the Eastern, Comp- in the Eastern Division. Um, and you got to love the three teams uh, that all needed to win. They were all at home and they were all favored. Uh, and they all did it, right? The Cajuns won, Marsh won, and ODU won. And that was, I mean, <laughs> a, a QB draw on fourth and three with two seconds left to go. <laughs> How great is that? And then you get a picture of uh, Ricky Ronnie's wife jumping into his arms at the end. It's fantastic. It's been quite the season. Um, I'm glad that Southern Miss held on to the fighting Will Halls. All right, he's got to figure out what to do with quarterback. And I don't mind saying I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't keep Terry Bowden, but you know John Hartwell knew uh, AD uh, got to see him all season long, so it wasn't a you know quick decision. Uh, but he wants to change things there. I think ULM is probably the toughest job in FBS college football, and you know we'll see how that goes. But you know South Alabama didn't have a good year; they qualified. Texas State had a fantastic season. Uh, the Georgias totally tanked towards the end of the season. Who knows what happened there? Uh, so it was it was quite the it was quite the season for the Sun Belt. There was a lot of fun uh, following them all season long. And you talk about Southern Miss. Look, they gave Troy some trouble for a half too in the, in that last game of the regular season. And also, I felt like Southern Miss at least at the end of the year uh, they were playing much better. 
They they were. You know, when Will gave up the uh, offensive coordinating duties, they were, they were doing much better. Remember, they had, you know, they beat the Cajuns. Uh, and the week before that, they, they were up 10 on App State. On, uh, uh, yeah, on App, App State. And somehow they managed to lose by 10. Uh, that was in the fourth quarter. So uh, they were playing a little bit better, probably banged up. And, again, they have to figure out what they're going to do with the quarterback. Uh, no surprise, Zach Wilkie uh, transferring uh, out. So we'll find out. It's, good. it's a tough spot when you, you know, basically have one year to go or else uh, type of deal. Uh, there will be some turnover. We'll see what, you know, Carter Bradley's not coming back. You know, he's done with South, I think. Uh, Gunnar Watson is probably done at Troy. Uh, we'll see what T.J. Finley does. He actually has a couple of years of eligibility. We'll see if he comes back. Uh, and so, you know, Jalen Rayner looks pretty good with uh, with Arkansas State. Zion Chris should be back with the Cajuns unless he gets an NIL deal somewhere else. So uh, you do have some new quarterbacks uh, breaking in next season, and maybe, you know, Southern Miss can take advantage of that. Was South Alabama your biggest disappointment this year? I, I think South Alabama is one of the biggest disappointments all season long. I, I don't understand what happened, right? Uh, you know, they they just – they the way Tulane played this year is the way I thought South Alabama was going to play this year. The way Liberty and Troy played this year, that's the way I thought South Alabama was going to play. And I do not know. I don't I, – you know, I'm not around the program anymore. Uh, so I, I don't have, you know, what they think inside, what, what happened. Uh, they got off to a bad start. They didn't even play well against – uh, Southeastern, they go up there and hammer Oklahoma State, and then actually Oklahoma State turned their, their season around. Right, they're playing for you know they playing for the Big Twelve Championship mm-hmm. after getting blown out at home by South Alabama, uh, and then you know they laid an egg against Central Michigan, and it's just it was up and down. And then Carter Carter got hurt, and you know the Damian Webb, um, you know didn't play against Texas State. Uh, I will say in that ball game. I'll give credit to both teams, right? Texas State's coming off a drubbing against Arkansas State where they gave up 77 points. The Jaguars were behind, what, 31-6 to in that ballgame in, like, the second quarter. And, you know, they made a ballgame of it. They made it a one-score game a couple of times. Uh, Desmond Trotter probably had the best game of his college career with four touchdown passes on, like, what, 18-21 to passing or something like that. So I give credit for both those teams because – you know, Texas State, you know, didn't fade as they have in the past, and the uh, the Jaguars didn't give up. I will say, Philip, and I'm sure you know this, I'm a hashtag always a bright side kind of guy, uh, because they didn't have a great season. We'll see if Kane Womack's name is, is out there a little bit. He's out there now because Indiana has a job opening, and that's where he came from, right? He was the, he was the Jaguars. Defensive coordinator went to Indiana to become their defensive coordinator, and now he's the he's the uh, Jaguars head coach. Well, now Indiana has a job opening, so he's connected with that. We'll see if that actually happens. Uh, but you know, if he had the kind of season that everyone expected, you know, maybe he gets the Mississippi State job. Uh, maybe other people come call it. So we'll see if he gets the one gig that he may be connected to. But otherwise, you know, again. Because I think they struggled, I think he's coming back. Hopefully that's the right decision because I, I really don't know what happened there. Yeah, I would, Not only are they one of the biggest disappointments in the conference, but I think they're one of the biggest disappointments in the country. And I, I really don't know what happened. Yeah, because I had so much coming back. That was the big storyline. I have so many players, they so have. many starters from a really good, a ten win team last year that were coming back. Yeah, I know you talk yeah. about you know coaches too. You know, I know a lot of people around here. You know, you know I'm right near. Troy about 45 minutes away from it uh, worried about you know John Summerall two years winning 10 games uh, in the season of course I think a lot of people were thinking okay when the Stoops news was going on Saturday night about him going to Texas A&M I think there's a lot of people I saw that I know said, oh no well Kentucky called John Summerall because that's where he came from but uh, he's sure, sure. Got plenty of calls right yes I mean so that all happened really fast right I went to the Kentucky Louisville game and rumors were that Summerall was heading to A&M before the game, then we're coming out. He's definitely going to the game, uh, or not? Uh, Stoops was going to A and M, and then you know, basically Stoops is going to A and M, and then we're like, well, if that's happening, then Summerall is going to go back to Kentucky, and that's what it was when we went to bed. When we woke up, yeah, they changed their mind. Either one or both, whatever. 
And, you know, you would think some are all sticking around Troy. He's, yeah, he's going to so. get a pay raise. He's going to get bonuses. Yeah, he's not. You know, he's he's probably got a good thing going on at Troy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, look at this game. It all started on Appalachian State side. And you talked about they, they started three and four uh, at one point this year. You know, they were lost at Old Dominion 28-21. Now they've rolled all five straight wins coming in this game. A win over James Madison. The only team to beat James Madison this year beat them 26-23. Just what is your take on this Appalachian State team? Well, so they had they had some really tough losses, right? They lost to first of all, they didn't have any two score losses. I'm not even sure they had. Uh, they did have a two score win, which was the final game of the year against Georgia Southern. So and Gardner Webb. So they did, they but they never had any and and East Carolina actually two score wins, but they never had any two score losses, right? They lost to Carolina in overtime if not double overtime they lost to wyoming uh, having a two-score lead in the fourth quarter by a field goal um they had to have a goal line stand right ulm is going to win the football game they're going to put the game away instead they have a goal line stand against ulm and they kick a 54-yard field goal uh to win and they were going to beat coastal right except they had a fumble on the big play and coastal comes back to win that ball game they did lose not a great one at Old Dominion, although now it doesn't look nearly as bad, 28-21. And then they just started reeling off. I, you know, I don't know if it was the schedule that sort of went with them. You know, they needed a 20-point fourth quarter to come back and beat Southern Miss. We talked about that. You know, Marshall was up and down. Uh, Georgia State faded, and, boy, I think they took advantage of James Madison. James Madison was all out of sorts that week. I think App State had a lot to do with it, but – you know, that was the week. They were hosting game day, so they're all psyched about that. They found out their waiver was denied uh, before they mentioned any kind of lawsuit. And, you know, James Madison didn't play very well. Made it a football game uh, at the end, and, and App State wins in, in overtime. So um, I think their defense has improved. Some are trying to tell me that it's as good as Troy's. I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, but, you know, Joy Aguilar's had a fantastic season for uh, App State. And we'll see if he can put up with Troy's defense. Troy's defense, not so great the last couple of weeks. But before that, what, they had like 44 points in six ball games. It was outstanding. So uh, the Cajuns got to uh, not, yeah, the Cajuns got to them. And like you said, Southern Miss put up a few points as well. Um, but I think, uh, you know, I have to say, what's the line? I said it was going to be like seven. Do we know what the line is? Let's see. I could cue it up right here. Uh, six Troy? And a half. Yeah, six, I got yeah. six and a half. What do you got? Yeah. It's six and a half, uh, and then the over under is fifty two and a half. Uh, I would take the under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I, yeah, I mean fifty two and a half is going to be twenty eight, twenty four. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't know. That, so, that ball game's got twenty seventeen written all over it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that, that's right up Troy's alley. That, you know, the, I think they're they're kind of okay. We can get in the thirties with you, but we kind of I think John Summerall prefers if it's going to be close, more lower scoring with the defense is doing their deal. You know, and I was looking too. You talking about quarterback Joey Aguilar, thirty three touchdowns, nine interceptions, but he's only been sacked thirteen times. Of course, Troy is second in the Sun Belt at getting after the quarterback with forty sacks. So that's kind of sure. an interesting deal there. Appalachian State's offensive line going against Troy. You know, Troy's got so many guys. You got Juvenor. You got, you know, Javon Solomon. You got so many guys that they have on that defense that can get after the quarterback. That's got to be a key part of it for App State, right? It will be. But do not underestimate, like you said, you know, John Summerall wants to play close to the vest. Gunnar Watson has had a fantastic season. Yes. Right? I, I don't – did he throw – I got a, I don't, did he throw an interception the last, you know, since September, right? I don't think he's thrown uh, an interception. Well, he's got four, and I didn't see the last week uh, what he did. He's been uh, fantastic. He does have five interceptions, so he threw one maybe against Southern Miss. Um, he's been fantastic. And so it, with Kamani Vidal, the running game, and Gunnar Watson able to go downfield, as he did against the Cajuns, Cajuns could not – stop either the run or the pass, even though they were in that football game. And just to have where we're not a game manager, last year, Phillip, we saw John Summerall. Uh, they beat South Alabama, which basically decided the West. You know, we're just going to run it a couple of times, and we don't care if we punt. If we can mm -hmm. flip the field and make you go the length of the field, we don't care. Right? So on third and four, 
we got a better chance of getting a first down by running it or we'll just, you know, punch it away rather than A, take a sack or B, throw an interception. And that's, it was a very controlled, ball controlled type offense. This year it's not. This year, you know, they got a bunch of great receivers. Uh, they got the running game. Gunnar Watson has been spectacular. Um, do not count. Uh, discount what Gunnar Watson has done. Having said all that about the two good quarterbacks, I do think the defenses will take over, and I would be surprised if, they, if the two teams combined for 40 points. Yeah, you talk about the interceptions. He did throw one against Southern Miss, but before that, he had okay. not thrown one since September the 30th against Georgia State. That's ri- so. Yeah, that's ridiculous, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. It felt like last year. You know, yeah. this is really the first year since he's been at Troy. That he's been the guy yeah. from game one all the way. I mean, you know, last year they, it had the quarterback rotation going. Eventually, he took over and you know kept the job. But well, I mean, interesting with him, in, the first year. It's, yeah, so Jared Dagey, right, the West Virginia yeah. transfer, he started the game against South Alabama, throws a bad interception, and Gunnar Watson comes in in like the the you know the fourth quarter and makes a huge third down throw. He actually did throw it in that case to to get a first down, uh, and basically keep it away from South Alabama to have a real shot later on in the ball game. So, you know, you, you would take 26 and five all day long from Gunnar Watson, right? That is a, that's a spectacular season. He's been in college a long time since I think 2018. Uh, but good for him to, you know, good for John summer all to stick with him and good for him to improve. Yeah. It feels like he's been there a decade though, Dave. I mean, it's just <laughs> right. That's what, anybody who's anywhere now more than two seasons. It's like, you know, we got the same thing here in Lafayette. How long is Levi Lewis going to be there? Right, Levi Lewis was he was the starting quarterback for three seasons, uh, but he had his redshirt year, and then uh, he came in and handed the ball off, and then he played for three years. So it felt like he was here forever. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the same thing. Anytime you get somebody there for more than a couple seasons, uh, especially in these day, this day and age, it, it seems like a lot. But good for Gunnar Watson. And, you know, too, with Troy, too, we can, you know, ignore the fact, you know, Kamani Vidal, a running back, uh, 1,349 yards, nine touchdowns this year. I mean, that's a guy that's been there for a while, too. And then just, okay, Troy can throw the ball, but they can also just turn around and just hand it to Kamani and beat you that way, too. Well, yes, but it, it's got to be a load off his shoulders, and he's got some wide shoulders that he doesn't have to carry the load, right? Kamani Vidal just has to be Kamani Vidal. He doesn't have mm-hmm. to be Superman. So, because he knows, well, if I could just get it to third and short, we can hand it off to me, and it'll be easier to run, or Gunner's going to complete a pass, right? I don't have to try and do more to, to break this tackle and stand and get stood up and fumble because someone else comes in and hits me besides the guy who's standing me up. So, I, I think the balance between having Gunner Watson a little bit, a lot more reliable this year, whereas, you know, in years past, if Kamani didn't have a ball game, they were going to lose basically it and there are a couple of games this year that he did not have a good game and they won because of Gunnar Watson yeah, so uh, I'm going to ask you this question to close up our conversation on the Sunbelt Championship game uh, can Appalachian State beat Troy I think they can I'm not going to pick them but I think they can they got to get a couple of turnovers uh, and take advantage there I would warn Troy you know play all 40 minutes right do not uh, you know don't take any time off I don't think that's the kind of team that they are um and I do think it will be a 60-minute ball game. I, I, you know, maybe you get it two scores, you know, with a make it, take it at half or turnover in there. But I, I, I think App State can win it. I would take Troy in a close ball game. I would take the under, and I would take App State. Well, if I could get seven, that would help me out as well. <laughs> we'll see if it goes to seven. Um, that that saves you. Uh, from losing by a touchdown, but I would take I would take the under and App State. Although I think Troy is going to win. It. All right, a lot of people uh, listen to this are going to be very happy that you're saying that, David. Uh, ah. n- now the SEC Championship. I want to ask you about this real quick. Alabama and Georgia. I think this is going to sure. be a fantastic matchup. I think that you can find yeah. warts issues with both teams, but and of course Alabama coming off that epic Iron Bowl on Saturday. Just uh, what what are your thoughts on the SEC Championship game? Well, we'll see if Georgia plays defense the way Georgia does or the way Auburn tried to, right? As crazy <laughs> as that finish was, right, uh, on a fourth and 31, Phillip, if you turn that around and Auburn wouldn't say that ball is incomplete, right? If you turn it around, people would be clamoring 
how did Alabama lose to a team that completed six passes? Mm -hmm. That's outrageous. And so we'll see. I, you know, I would, I would do what Auburn did, try to force Jalen Milrow to run, right? I mean, he got, he didn't get one. He got at least two, you know, beyond the line of scrimmage plays. So, and if they did that the last time, the last play, Auburn probably wins. So we'll see if Georgia takes anything from the Auburn Alabama game. I'm sure Alabama is going to take something from that, that, you know, they have to get Jalen to either to get rid of it a lot sooner if he's under pressure or run a lot sooner and, and not hesitate. Um, I mean, I think Georgia is going to win. I think Georgia is a better football team. Uh, we'll see if McConkey and, uh, and Bowers play, right? I happen to think that Bowers when healthy is the most, I think he's the best player in America. Uh, I think he's the bi- biggest mismatch uh, in the country. Uh, he saved them against Auburn, right? He put his mitt out mm-hmm. there and made a one-hand catch. So um, I, I think George is going to win this football game. I think Alabama, I think Nick, this is one of Nick Saban's best coaching jobs of his career. Uh, it really could have gone in the other direction. They won a lot of close ball games. I know Georgia didn't play particularly well last week against Georgia Tech. Um but I think I just think George is a better football team. So we'll yeah, see how that goes. Yeah, it's going it's gonna be an interesting game. Of course, Kirby versus Saban. That's you know it's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one. And uh this was fun. David, have you on the show as always? Uh let the listeners and viewers uh where can they where can they find you? Where can they check out the podcast, the radio show, all the good stuff you're doing? Yeah, you can check out the podcast, uh Locked on Sunbell on YouTube. Please subscribe. We're getting close to that that uh, magical mark of a thousand subscribers. Uh, and you also you can get Locked on Sunbelt wherever you get your audio podcast. Uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify seem to be the most popular. But if you search Locked on Sunbelt wherever you get your audio podcast, you'll be able to find it there. So I appreciate the time, uh, Philip. Thanks very much for having me on. Oh, yeah. Always, Dave. And I look forward to talking to you some down the road. Thank you for checking out this episode of Wiregrass Daily News Sports. You can find the podcast over at wiregrassdailynews.com or wherever you get your podcast. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please follow, rate, and review. Leave a review, and I will read it on a future edition of the show. And if you just leave four stars, you are just a straight-up hater. You can follow me on social media over at pjordansec. You can email me at sportstalkfieldjordan at gmail.com. All right. Let me remove that off the screen. Uh, all right. Once again, thanks to David Schultz for coming on the show. Really appreciate him taking time out. Always enjoy talking all things Sunbelt. We have a little SEC championship stuff there, too, as well. And uh, check out Locked on Sunbelt if you want your daily fix on Sunbelt Sports because they'll be talking about basketball and baseball, too, as well. And just go follow him over there, too, what he's doing over in Lafayette, Louisiana, on 103.3. The GOAT on the sports chat from 3 to 6. And uh, that's going to do it for me today. I uh, appreciate you checking out this show. Really do. Uh, check this out down here. Uh, you can check out the podcast over at wiregrassdailynews.com or wherever you get your podcast. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please follow, rate, and review. Leave a review. I will read it on a future edition of the show. And if you leave those four stars, you are just a straight up hater. Uh, you can also find me on social media at pjordansec. Love to talk to you over there. You can email me at sportsoutfieldjordan at gmail.com. And also check out my written work over at Last Word on college football. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be previewing the ACC championship game. And, of course, later in the week, Matt Lowe will be joining me where we will preview and predict all the championship weekend games. Hope everybody has a great Wednesday. Until next time, bye-bye.